we're now ready to implement totally squares. Um, as before, I'm going to give you some scaffolding. Please write some code to fit a line with just the slope. You're going to estimate that AB parameter, the perpendicular vector, to uh, end data points using now totally squares. Uh, bring in some libraries. This is the same as before. I got a bunch of points. Uh, I'm computing the x values. Here is the line. Um, everybody is, everything is satisfying a line, and I'm going to go ahead and um, add in a little bit of noise here, a little bit of jitter. Your code is going to come in right here, and then this is a little bit of plotting code. Now, a couple of things about to, to remind you here what's going to come out the other end. So you're going to generate a vector for me called u again, and you should have two components, a, b, which is the vector that is perpendicular to the line. Now, remember, total least squares doesn't return the line. It returns the vector that is perpendicular to it. So if you want to draw the line through the data points, you can't draw what comes out of total least squares. You have to rotate it by 90 degrees. So uh, think about how do I rotate a line through 90 degrees? We actually did this way back when at the very beginning of the semester when we introduced the rotation matrix. So if you don't remember how to rotate a line by 90 degrees, go ahead and look it up. So when you get your estimate of the line, you have to rotate it by 90 degrees so that the visualization will be right. You'll know if you got it wrong when you display the line, it'll just be off by 90 degrees. Let me also uh, remind you that you're going to compute uh, the eigenvectors of the matrix X that's associated with uh, the total least squares error function, and you're going to want to grab the minimal eigenvalue eigenvector. Um, don't always rely on the fact that a Python library is returning things in sorted order in terms of eigenvalues. I recommend that you sort and make sure that you're getting the minimal and not the maximal. And again, you'll know if that line is going through the data points or not. So please go ahead and pause the video, uh, try it out, and I'll show you my solution when we come back. All right, again, not a lot of code, but a lot of details here that have to get right. So I'm going to first of all build my matrix. I'm going to stack in the x's and the y's associated with my data into an n by 2 matrix. That axis equals 1, again, is telling me to stack things into the columns. I'm going to compute the eigenvectors and eigenvalues. That's what I'm putting into L and V of x transpose x. x is n by 2 x transpose is 2 by n, the product is 2 by 2. I've got two eigenvectors and two eigenvalues. I want the smallest one. And as I said before, don't count on these things being in sorted order. And so, I mean, in this case, it was only 2 by 2, so you could have just checked which one it is. But here what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort L, which are the eigenvalues, um, from largest to smallest. And then I'm going to take the eigenvector V associated with the smallest eigenvalue, the last element in, this, um, in, in the index. And then I'm going to rotate that by 90 degrees because I've estimated the perpendicular vector, not the actual line. And the way I do that is I swap the coordinates and negate. That gives me a rotation by 90 degrees. And then when I feed that u2 into, sorry, I told you it was u, it was u2. You probably saw that in the code because there's a u2 right there. So when I feed that into this little um, bit right here, it will extend the line out by scaling it, and you should see that the line goes through the data very nicely. Now, when do you use total least squares? When do you use least squares? When do you use weighted least squares? What's right? What's wrong? There's no right answer here. I can't answer that question. It depends. Um, I use uh, least squares when I know something about one of my coordinates and that there's no noise or slop in there, and I know that all the slop is in the other parameter. When I have less certainty about each of the parameters, the x and the y, I use total least squares. Sometimes it just comes out that way. When we are estimating the homography, we set up uh, a, a constraint that said the cross product of two vectors is equal to zero. That was naturally a total least square solution because I was setting something equal to zero and set it to something that was non-zero. So these, the tools that we are introducing, we're not ready quite ready to tell you exactly when and where and how. This is more about building that machinery. And then as we go through the course, we'll start to see how these tools are actually applied and where to apply them and when to apply them and why to apply them.